Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the world. Today we're going to complete our mahogany piece. This is part three of obviously three parts. You'll find links down below to parts one and two. So let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. Okay, so the second layer is dried. I have put a barrier coat over top of it. You can uh, just to give me a layer of added protection to make sure that we don't have any problems with lifting when we do another coat. You just never know. Uh, if you let this dry 100% overnight, you should be fine. I always say should because you just don't want to take a chance. You go through this entire process and something could go wrong. So up here's where we kind of have our, kind of, not kind of, we have our crotch figure and here's where we have our ribbon. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to be using the Modern Masters Tintable Scumble Glaze. Tints with pigment, never paint. This has a drying agent inside of it. It'll dry on its own. If you add paint, it dries twice as fast. Your open time or working time goes down dramatically. Interior only cleans up with soap and water. For this one, we, uh, we're gonna use, uh, what is it? Our colors, here's our glaze, it's all tinted up. Um, what do we have? Venetian red, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and violet, all right? Uh, I've diluted the glaze down a little bit because it is so intense. I mean, I'm not sorry, I'm intense. It's so thick, which is fine. Don't buy water. <laughs> you don't need to buy water. So I'm going to take some clear glaze, my black nylon purdy bristle brush, because it's a very soft, soft bristle. I'm going to give myself what we call a slip coat. I'm going to brush on a thin layer of clear glaze straight out the can. And what this does, it's the surface is dry, so it's hungry for moisture. So this glaze is going to be absorbed into that surface, hydrating the surface. That way when we go into it with our glaze, we have more time, even more time. So what I do is I put it on top to bottom, brush it out side to side, and I'm gonna finish top to bottom. Okay. I might even just, what is it? We're stretching out the glaze to make sure we get 100% coverage nice and even. Somebody's probably gonna say, why don't you use a roller? Because a roller is going to put way too much glaze on the surface and we don't want that. Okay. Huh. Sorry. I don't know why it's going in and out. Sorry about that. All right, so now we're gonna take our glaze. Same, br uh, same brush, clean brush. And let's get it on there. And there's our color. This is a toning layer, but we're still gonna do some work on a toning layer, meaning we're gonna manipulate it around a little bit. Because See, if I just leave it as this, we're gonna lose our pattern that we've created. Well, not lose it, but it's getting busy. It's harder to see it. So now I'm going to put that on, and again, side to side. Stretch it out. We're going to use the same tools as we used in step two. The brass mottler, the slotted... Oh, I can't see it. Hold on. Let me finish this. Back up. Brass mottler, our slotted spalter, slotted fan, and the double-headed squirrel. All right, that's that. Glaze is on. Huge difference. Day, oh wow, big difference, right? All right, let's get our brass mottler. Brass mottler uh, from the Whistler Corporation in, in the UK. Brass, because it's the bristles, the hog hair bristles are set in the brass and it pressed onto the wooden handle. And it's all set in a little bit of epoxy. That way uh, you get lesser quality ones, like this guy. It's cheap steel. It's going to rust, discolor your bristles. It's not the end of the world, but actually if you look right here, real close, my finger as you see that, that's rust coming down. Okay, so what we're going to do is look at the pattern we created earlier and work to bring it back. Not bring it back, but... So again, as we go up... Oops, a little sloppy there. So I'm going to up, jog, come back down. Now, just because you're going up doesn't mean you go wide. We're not creating a pyramids or teepees. Now, on the sides, again, you can take this brush. It starts out wide. Here's your center of the tree, the heart of the tree. Heart grain. As it comes out, you get the ribbon, which is the straight side on the outer part of the tree, which creates this. 
So as it gets farther out, this then turns wide brush and comes in. Like so. Now, earlier I was showing you the slotted brush. Take your slotted spalter. I'm going to dip it in some water, get it a little wet. Bring out the excess, take it through my that's trash. Take it through my steel cone and separate those even more. It's slotted simply because see the slots in there where the razor blade came through and cut out these? That's how you buy it. You don't have to do it. So the same thing, I can take it flat or wide and pull it down like so. Pull the excess off. Wide, bring it in. And as we get closer out to the side, we're going to start getting straighter and straighter. Now, the other thing we can do is this lovely guy, our double-headed squirrel, from the Luco company. Wet it, run it through the uh, cone, separate it out. I know, a lot of brushes, why? They all do a little bit, something just a little bit different. Just put it on. Same thing wide and turn it as it comes down. See that? This kind of got a little bit. There we go. Whoopsie. Got a little sloppy there. Bring that back. This is almost perfectly straight out here. All right. Done with those. We'll make sure we clean them up. Triple row badger hair brush. Triple row because there's three rows of badger hair. Set in epoxy and wood handle. No metal to have anything leach out and ruin this brush. This brush has been with me at least 15 years. And you treat it right, it'll last you a long time. There's a lot of different shapes, a lot of different sizes. This is about $100. There's a lot less expensive brushes out there, but you're going to find out they don't last. Now, as this tree grows, the sap comes up through the tree and out. Okay, so we're going to start and come up lightly. So when you do this, it's a very soft touch. The bristles are straight in, not at an angle. Straight, just lightly dancing across the surface. And then come out from the center. And then, let's, then you go with the grain. So you're simply going out, 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 right? Not across. You don't go back and forth. We're simulating the look of the sap growing out over time. We still have a nice defined grain. I see some of this could be a little darker here in the middle. Not darker, but a little more pronounced. I kind of lost some of it right here. So I'm just going to take the spalter and come back and get it. There we go. Yeah, that's much better. Sometimes I get heavy handed with the Mottler and this spalter is a soft, more of a delicate brush. And I can get that real fine looking grain. See how much time I had to work this glaze? It's just, it's almost like the traditional oil glazes. Just reworking some things. Some of these little soft, delicate areas tend to get lost sometimes. So it's always your that fine dance back and forth. Now where's my uh, big fancy expensive brush? Hmm, can't find it. And it should be here because I—that's the problem. I cleaned up and nothing's where it's supposed to be. Well, we're gonna let that glaze firm up while I look for it because it's not quite ready to do create the moire look or add the mores. So let's take some clear glaze down here on the bottom. Brush it out. Whoops, got a little color in that. No big deal. Take my color glaze. Just means I have less and less of it. Stretch it out. 
Get that wild hair out of there. You know what? I'm going to use my slotted spalter. Just so I feel. All right, you know what? Where's my slotted fan? I'm going to use that one today. A little bit. Is that right? Where'd you go? I'm missing a brush. It's because I cleaned up. Losing my mind. There you are. This is the slotted fan spalter. And then we got three. All right, there's all kinds for different things. But we're gonna use this guy. Again, open up the comb, or the bristles with the comb. And we're gonna just pull it across. Whoop, a little too hard, there we go. You gotta get the pressure just right. I've used too much pressure over here, so I lost it. So I'm come back into it. I'll pull this over to this side. I'm just going over exactly what I did earlier. Always offload because it's going to grab some glaze. And after a while, you're not going to see anything, meaning it's just going to keep moving the glaze or just repositioning the glaze. You know, you can give it a little interest if you want just keep make sure everything flows properly I'm okay with that I want a little bit softer look in there use a slotted fan spalter Can come through here just to soften up even more oh yeah nice and soft very delicate So that's the thing, some of these, when you're matching existing mahogany in someone's house, you gotta, you're gonna need a lot of, not need a lot, but you're gonna need a few different tools. Because it could be a heavier grain, softer grain, and now we're gonna come across just like we did earlier, simulating the sap going through, and it slowly diffuses it just a little bit, and then go back and forth with it. All right, we're gonna let this set up for a minute. I'm going to come back and add some more movement to it. See you in a bit. All right. What I was looking for was the, uh, the bank breaker, the brush. To, no, I'm just kidding. Foam brush. 50 cents. Uh, I'd like to have a three inch, but I don't have one here. But we'll use what we have. So what I do is once the glaze gets to, I don't want to say tacky, but it's almost tacky. It's to the point where when you take this and come across it lightly and you just kind of it'll catch a little bit of glaze and you're drag you're catching and releasing a little bit but not moving the glaze meaning it's just enough to move it a hair I'm gonna just pull it up like so and this creates the look of the sap as it comes through so as the tree's growing, year after year, the sap comes up so high, it comes out. And it leaves over time. When you look at a really nice piece of wood, you'll see it. You really got to know what you're looking for it. Some people just take it for granted, but you'll see this real pretty, almost metallic-y look. And you'll see like this little, for lack of a better word, wave in the wood. And that's the moiré coming through. So on this piece, it would only be on the outer edges. You really wouldn't get a whole lot of it here because it's always growing and pushing out. So imagine this is your tree. It comes a little tree, and as it gets bigger, it pushes out. It keeps pushing out, pushing out, pushing out, like so, all right? So now it's trunk. It's sometimes it can almost be pretty straight. That's why you cut it in the center to get that real pretty look. So we're just going to take this guy. And when you do the mores, they kind of have to line up. You don't want them to just be haphazard all over the place, like one, two, three, four. There's, it's a ray, more ray. All right, so let's just kind of hit it. Let it go slow. Maybe you can hear that. And I got to look for it to make sure that the other ones come in pretty close to. I don't like I said. I don't want them all over the place. All right, take my badger brush. 
I'm going to push up and that kind of just helps with the look. And that kind of helps. It helps. What it does is it's grabbing some loose glaze and pushing it up on itself. many but keep them all pretty 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 well lined up all right let's push them out the show yeah so let's see what we look like here Remember earlier, on the second step, I put the glaze all over the whole thing and messed up. Um, so you can see the clear difference between toning layer and that. And for some reason, on this camera, at least from what I'm seeing in the monitor, it looks very orange, very stark. So hopefully when I bring it to you close so you can see it, it looks a little bit nicer. Or not like, it looks more true to what it really looks like. Now when I'm 100% done, and you're finished, polyurethane, protect it, just like you would real wood. It just depends on what you're doing. It could be satin, gloss. But that becomes the, uh, that would be, you know, it's a protective layer to protect what you did. I wish I had a black sample board because these white borders are very unattractive. Alright. Let's bring it in for you. Can you see how soft it is? See down at the bottom, you can really see those mores I was talking about. I caught the glaze just at the right time down there. The top's a little fizzy. See it? But that's it. Nice, simple, clean mahogany. Yeah. God, I did a video a long time ago. One of the first videos I ever did, I'm embarrassed by it, but I'm going to leave it up to remind me. Um, that's why you just keep practicing. But yeah, there you go. There, this would be the your rails and styles of a door. They'd be the center panels of your doors, cabinets, anything. You can change your colors if you need to, to get different, because like stain, you just change your colors. That's the real color. Can you see that? When I bring it back, it's, oh, God. But that's what you're looking at right there. That's the real color. All right, there you have it. Mahogany. That's simple. Well, thank you for watching. And, um, yeah, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll try to do my best to answer them as quickly as I can. I will get links inserted down below as quickly as I can. Um, that's it. My name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.